So here we are, uh, it's morning time, uh, and it's time to feed the fish. Fish are very important to this system. The fish manure uh, is collected uh, through a series of pumps uh, and is uh, distributed throughout the grow beds. And then through a natural process, bacteria break down the manure uh, into nitrites and nitrates. And then the, the plants uh, eat the nitrites and nitrates. It's basically like awesome fertilizer. Uh, you wonder why we don't do this more often, but uh, the plants break down the, the bad stuff, the manure, and turn it into clean water, and then uh, that water is recirculated back into the fish tanks. And the really amazing thing about all this, I think it's amazing, uh, is that, well, there's two things really. First, fish are totally sustainable as compared to livestock, which we have here at the ranch. Each hen, which is the female fish, female trout, uh, can produce over a thousand eggs per cycle. Uh, and they do that every year. So one buck uh, can spawn multiple hens, and we have quite a few different ones here. So uh, we're not into the raising them and spawning them yet. That's a lot to learn, and, and we started that process, but we're not there yet. But anyway, if, if we can get even 50% of those eggs, uh, you know, uh, through all the process of loss and, and learning, uh, that is a huge amount of fish every year, uh, and they're easy to take care of, uh, very, very sustainable. The, the biggest problem with the fish is where to get their food. Uh, so uh, we're going to go through that a little bit this morning. So let me show you. Uh, here is where we store the fish food. They're airtight containers. Uh, this amount of fish food here is going to last us for, boy, almost half a year uh, if, if we had all the fish in that we were supposed to. Right now, uh, we started with about 176 fish uh, of various sizes from 2 to 3 inches all the way up to brood stock, which are almost 16 inches and they're beautiful. Uh, you'd like to eat them right now. They are beautiful rainbow trout. But uh, we lost some. Uh, we lost some because we put them in too early. In some cases the bed wasn't fully cycled so we had very high ammonia. Uh, and ammonia is like suffocating them. So unfortunately we lost a handful, uh, literally a handful. Uh, not very many, but we did lose some. And then the big problem that really consumed them is I had a cover over the pump inlet, but the fish found a way around the cover, and uh, we had death by pump. So a whole bunch of the little ones, about 50 of them total, got sucked up in the pump. Poor guys. Uh, but uh, it's a lesson learned, so their sacrifice is not in vain. Uh, that has resulted in a whole new pump cover system, uh, and now all the fish are nice and safe from the uh, deadly pumps. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to feed them. We're going to go into uh, lane three where we have uh, big fish and medium sized fish. So I'm going to take a little bit of the big fish here, just a little bit. We don't want to overfeed them. And I'm going to take a little bit of itty bitty fish food, put that in there. And a little bit of the medium sized fish. And come over here. We got our fish food from Scredding, which is a very high quality fish food out of Utah. It's very difficult to find organic fish food anywhere. Let me set up the tripod here. So, here we go, we're gonna feed the fish. You're not gonna see much. There's not very many in here. Uh, mixing up the food a little bit. And then we lift up the cover and throw it in. Take you guys in there. There's fish food there, so they'll eventually smell that and come and get it. And we'll go do this a few more times. So as I was saying, uh, Scredding is a good supplier. They're recognized by the uh, fishery industry as being high quality food. Uh, yes, there's fish meal in it. Uh, it's difficult to find fish food without fish meal in it. We're aware of that. I did a, a blog on my an original website which I've since taken down uh, I need to put it back up but uh, sometimes fish meal results in the death of more fish than what you're actually feeding so that's no good oh there we go there we go and check them out there there you go eat it up guys
Okay. So, uh, anyway, as I was saying, the uh, sometimes they, they end up killing more garbage fish, I guess you would say. That's not a, a good way to put it, but it's kind of the truth if you, if you think of it from what we value, um, which is unfortunate. But uh, nonetheless, uh, it can take sometimes up to two fish dead to kill one fish, or to feed one fish, excuse me. Uh, and that's no good. We don't like that. So we do have a plan. Uh, it's past what we would call phase four. And essentially, uh, we did this in our very earliest experiments, uh, which were done in the house, in the office. Uh, essentially, what you need to do is you need to have plant-eating fish, minnows, that eat algae. So then you would raise algae, which is very simple to raise. I mean, we have a swimming pool, above ground pool, and I can grow algae in it without even trying. Uh, so move that inside where it's controlled and you can uh, take, for example, digestate from our digester, which is filled with phosphorus and uh, nitrogen uh, and the, the minerals that the algae would need to thrive. And you put that all in there. And if you think of like an overflow pond on a dairy where they have lots of uh, manure going into a pond, there's all, or unfortunately pollution, you'll see where the fertilizer goes in the water, there's tons of algae. Well, that's God's natural way of actually dealing with things. So all we need to do is take that, put it in a bottle essentially, and bring it inside. So uh, I guess you're saying we're, we'd be creating a, uh, a planet in a bottle, which uh, for us here at The Real Martian, that's important because that's what we want to do. So the algae grows and controlled. It needs light, so that's energy, and it needs nutrients, which we can take from our digest state and uh, leftover organic material. And then we pump uh, some of the algae into a bed, uh, a fish tank, where there's uh, rosy red minnows are the types of fish that are actually readily available. You can go to PetSmart. They are, um, I don't know, retail versions of uh, the natural bait fish that occur uh, for trout to eat. Uh, they're very small, like one to two inches maximum. Trout love them, and they're plant eaters. So you would feed the algae to the plant eaters, and the plant eaters get fed to the rainbow trout. What we are going to have to learn is how to make sure the right quantity of and mixture stay persistent. The most difficult thing that we had when we did them uh, in our initial experiment is actually getting them to spawn. They need to have water that goes above 65 Fahrenheit. These are the rosy red minnows. And they need to have structure. And they need to have no predators around that continually eat them and their eggs. Uh, we learned this the hard way by accidentally having a goldfish that came with the batch that we got from PetSmart. Thank you guys for high quality control. Uh, and those goldfish kept getting fatter and fatter for some reason. And we never got any spawning taking place. I wonder why. Hmm. I don't really wonder. The goldfish were eating them. Once we learned that, the goldfish were sent to the giant toilet bowl in the sky, and uh, all of a sudden I found eggs underneath one of the structures. So we figured it out, uh, but spawning fish and, and having them do all that in captivity, that's not an easy problem. So we're gonna be dealing with that in the future. Right now, uh, we're dealing with just trying to raise the trout, which is not too complicated, but it does take some learning. And once we get that under control and we get the plant growing and everything, let's flip around and show you here. Once we get this all under control, then we'll start spawning our own fish. But in the meantime, we're happy to help our local small businesses. There's a fish farm that we bought uh, our fish from, which is a very good fish farm, lots of flow rate. Uh, flow rate is important in fish farms because that is fresh water coming in. Uh, the guy was very, very nice to us, Nisqually Fish Farms, uh, and we really appreciated his help, Ron, so thank you for all you're doing. And we're just going to treat it like cattle. Uh, some people raise cattle from birth, which is what we're doing here at the Raymond Ranch. Uh, that's our earth-based operation, uh, not the Martian. And then uh, some other people, though, they choose to do yearlings, so they will uh, get a cow that's been birthed by another uh, ranch, and then they'll just keep it for one season. And they put it on pasture, they raise it to full stock, and they take it to slaughter. And this is what we're gonna be doing with the trout. So we'll be uh, procuring them from the Squally Trout Farm, 
and he'll be delivering them to us and we'll get them at the 12 inch size, uh, keep them for a season, and then uh, we'll be able to harvest immediately. Uh, some people have asked, are we actually gonna be selling them? Yes, we are. I think uh, it's gonna be a, a superior quality product compared to other fish farm operations. Our water is extremely clean. The fish are very healthy. Uh, we monitor it daily. Uh, it's difficult to find that in other places. So uh, that's the story with the fish, and I hope you enjoy this. See you next time.